Absolutely gorgeous morning in Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome to Coffee Country and Cody. For those of you joining us now on our Circle streaming platforms, and you can find them all, and there's a bunch of them different ways, and maybe you have a favorite, and you can go to circlecountry.com and link. Actually, there's an opportunity to link to your favorite streaming platform. And Circle Now, like Aaron Cooper, who's in for Kelly Sutton this morning with entertainment, like her mom and daddy mm-hmm. do, they watch on the app on Circle Now, which is available in your app store. And the great thing about that, if you miss something, mm-hmm. like, say, Shane Smith and the Saints in studio yesterday, mm-hmm. and debuting at the Opry last night, on demand for up to 24 hours. So that's still up, actually. Yep. And on YouTube, on, on demand YouTube forever. Forever. <laughs> My new social media project. I am going home every day after the show and editing together the full show to upload to our WSM Radio YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So you can watch it forever and ever and ever. So infinity. And beyond. That's, yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. That's, that's it. it. You and I have such the same work ethic because I go home after the show every day and nap. <laughs> well, I didn't nap after I uploaded to YouTube. So. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what you working on this morning? Our top right. stories in entertainment. Well, I don't know if Josh Groban and Nelly will ever perform in the same room ever again <laughs> for the rest of time, but I got to see it last night at the third annual Breland and Friends. Our friend Breland brought out probably a dozen or more superstars to benefit the Oasis Center. They help at risk youth here in middle tennessee they raised thousands of dollars for them and i have clips from the show you do not want to miss these highlights we got the war and treaty nelly and uh reactions from all of that jazz and willie nelson nelson has announced his lineup for the annual fourth of july picnic that he's been doing for many decades nate smith has covered my favorite nirvana song and bailey zimmerman the spider monkey or uh squirrel monkey as bill cody likes to call him I've He's changed it. I've changed his flying squirrel. Flying now. squirrel. Yeah. He should open a bar called that. They don't it really do, fly. It would do well. They glide, but mm-hmm. they're called flying squirrels. Exactly. Yeah. All that and more coming up in just a little bit. And just a little bit, uh, you were talking about the cosmic experience last <gasps> night at the Ryman Auditorium. Oh, yes. Uh, Daniel Donato's Cosmic Country coming to the mm-hmm. caverns in Pelham, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. But nuts before he joins us on Coffee, Country, and Cody here in just a little bit. Well, we had it, Charlie. We're going to rewind to the stage of the Grand Ole Opry. I think it was the 50th anniversary celebration for Bass Pro, and Chris Jansen brought his son out. Didn't you host that? I sure did, yes, I sir. I thought you did. Mm-hmm. You got some free swag from Johnny Morris. I did. Oh, I still haven't nice. spent. Still, ha- still got the gift card. Right. Didn't share any of it. <laughs> uh, duffel bag full of stuff. This is Coffee Country and Cody. <laughs> Very excited to meet Daniel Tonato for the first time. Brand new music, an album called Reflector, which is available wherever you get your music. And Daniel Donato's Cosmic Country in the Caverns, Pelham, Tennessee, Ooh. coming next month, April 20th, which is actually induction night, I want to mention that, for Scotty McCreary mm-hmm. to become the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry. Well, good morning, Daniel. Good morning, brother. We're sitting here swapping stories and singing old songs from the golden age of country music mm-hmm. from... Lefter Frizzell, Merle Haggard, and we were referencing Curly Putman, and you said something about green, green grass, a home, and I yeah. did my recitation, my finest Porter Wagner moment there, you know. <laughs> There's a guard and a sad old padre, and arm in arm we'll walk at daybreak, and once again, I'll touch the, the green, green, green grass, grass of home. home. <laughs> Not the harmony right there. <laughs> and you lit up, we just started down that writer's rabbit hole in traditional country music, and your name is when you see your name, you often see a reference to your incredible talent related to Chet Adkins and Jerry Reed. Oh, yeah. I, I love think them. that says all that needs to be said about what people think about you. Oh, right on. I love Chet Adkins. I don't think I'd be into country music if it wasn't for Chet Adkins. Um, it, it kind of all started with him uh, when I was 14. And uh, I started getting into his records and the records he produced and everything at RCA Studio A, and uh, it was all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, uh, or did you know, Chet's connection to Merle Travis, and that you know, he and Merle were great friends, different playing styles, but way different. You, yeah. yeah, Merle had that more. He had that more. For people who don't know, give us a little sample there. Yes, yeah, so like a, the way Merle Travis would go about something, you know. Well, his nine-pound hammer is a little too heavy for my size, honey, for my size. Well, roll on, buddy, don't you roll so slow. How can I roll when the wheel won't roll? It was He's a more thumb, a thumb picker. Would you, would you reference yeah, it that way? Travis picking. Yeah. 
Right, he's picking the two of them, and he's not as nuanced about it as Chet is. He's just real rough. There's the Jerry Reed. <laughs> but Chet Atkins had this nice way about um, just being very gr- uh, graceful and elegant and uh, illustriously uh, on point with it, with it, with his accuracy. Um, maybe with something like Freight Train. He's picking a little less hard there, you know, and he's doing all these great, you know, you know, Merle never really found himself getting up, you know, past a couple frets unless he was doing chords, but Chet was just able to phrase and do all the single note stuff. It's like a guitar version of Bob Ross's painting show. That is a beautiful comparison. (laughs) You do this so well. That's great, brother. Yeah. (laughs) I love Bob Ross. Who doesn't? Or or didn't? Yeah. Let's give this tree a friend. <laughs> Let's give this tree a friend. Okay, so uh, on this, in the the same vein as, as Bob Ross, his, you know his catchphrase being "Happy accidents." Mm-hmm. Have you had any recent songwriting happy accidents where you've been working on something that you didn't expect to play out the way it did, and it turned out to be perfect? All the every song. Oh, that's great. Uh, every every song I write, yeah. Um, you know. I think I, I, I tried to, I, I got taught really early on that it's best to listen and not know mm-hmm. what's about to happen, you know? And um, I, when I go down to write a song, I, I you know, I kind of like do what Buck Owens did where he, he says, you know, he just sits down, closes his eyes and says a prayer and, and tries to set himself up for success and just listens to what the song wants to say. I read an article in Rolling Stone <laughs> about you. You said discovery is the key. I think it's one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you yeah. grew up, I'm looking at a probably 10, 12 year old you. Oh, uh, right on. A, a particular place that I found uh, an article in Atlantic City, New Jersey, is where you spent your early years before your family moved to Middle Tennessee. Yeah, we right? were living in different parts of New Jersey, and, and then we moved to Spring Hill, Tennessee, when I was eight years old. Was your dad involved with. Th- th- automotive there or was it just no he does software and um, oh, okay. the money he was making um what in new jersey wasn't really good and uh we were we ended up being in a bad neighborhood and in and, and bad schools and my my dad uh married my mom when i was four and uh, adopted me and mm-hmm. um decided that he wanted to start a family with my mom and, and give his kids a, a better life and so they left New Jersey and they came to Spring Hill, Tennessee, of all places. Uh, and he got a good gig here. And um, it ended up working out for the best. Cause we were an hour away from the mecca of the greatest American oh, yeah. music. Mm-hmm. Shocking that New Jersey hasn't used that as their slogan. Bad neighborhoods, bad schools. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 I mean, but but do, do me a favor if you don't want. Take me back about two weeks, March 7th and 8th at the Ryman because oh, yeah. because you would have spent years in the shadow of that building busking on Lower Broad mm-hmm. tons of time at Roberts that right. and, and you started doing that when yeah. you were 14 right you yeah. were busking yeah. at 14 that's yeah. right Bill yeah yeah. Uh, was and, so what was it like to stand on that stage uh, <sighs> well it seems like uh, I, I feel like I have this kind of uh, it feels like a cosmic deal or something that I've made with my guitar <laughs> uh-huh. Um where it's just the more I play and uh, the more I stay focused on that and I just give it all back to it, I, I can kind of uh, have visions in my head and then in 10 years, they're in my Google calendar. Um, so what's in the I, Google calendar for uh, 2034? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I just want to have a, a good posture and a tour bus. There you go. All right. Hey, <laughs> and just a couple more good songs. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I played uh, 464 shows at Roberts, uh, four hours a night, and, and, and that's where I discovered uh, Bob Wills and Tom T. Hall and uh, Waylon and, and Hank Senior and Ernest Tubb and, and the Midnight Jamboree and um, well, you know all the great all the great musicians that would play in all their bands like Billy Bird and, and Buddy Emmons and uh, I got to play with Willie Cantu who who played with Buck Owens. Oh, oh wow, the drummer for Buck Owens. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, and I get to play with a lot of these cats at Roberts because they were still picking down there at the day. You know, and uh, they show up 
uh, in their New Balance shoes, and they drink a Diet Coke and <laughs> and, and just play their butt off for four hours. And yeah. I, I get to go ask them all these crazy questions about you know, chord inversions or, you know, how do you get act naturally to feel so fast, but it's not actually too fast. <laughs> um, in the whole world of, of the legacy of great country music opened itself up to me, and I was just all in on it. You know? uh, it our general manager, Eric Markham, who's in studio this morning, he was <laughs> sharing a story about you listening to us on a school bus. What's that, what's that backstory? I, well, I became obsessed with this uh, spirit. The spirit of this music, I think, kind of started puppeteering me when I was really young. And um, I, I just started diving into the, the history of it all. And, and WSM was the most obvious place to start. What is it? Uh, the, the Castle of the Sky. The Air Castle. The Air Castle of the Sky. 50,000 watts. Um, and I started diving into those old radio shows back in the day, and I, I was just into it in this way that I wasn't into anything else. And so I'd listen to your show, and I'd go back and listen to the archives of the Jamboree and all the old Opry shows. And I, I just love it, man. I always have. Uh, and none of my friends knew what to make of me. <laughs> you know? You know? Uh, no one was really, you know, they weren't, they didn't really get, you know, Honky Tonkin or, or Lost Highway when you're 14 years old, you know? It, it really spoke to me at, at that age and love sig blues and mm -hmm. you know uh, fireball mail and great speckled bird and uh, all that stuff and i still love it it's pretty much all i listen to still oh i can hear a cuff right now if i close my eyes and in my mind's ear i can hear him saying dallas bound 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 oh, fireball right. mail <laughs> you do some great impressions <laughs> he, does. You really do. he really does i uh, hear uh, quite possibly daniel donato so help me i'm sitting here looking at daniel donato and i just got an email from daniel donato hey i got tour dates i got new music i got i got i got <laughs> Your team is doing their job this morning, buddy. Thank you, brother. <laughs> I'm very lucky. I'm a very lucky guy. Yeah. Hey, tomorrow night you're in Athens, Georgia at the Georgia Theater. And then on the 29th, you're in Tuscaloosa, Huntsville on the 30th, and a few days off. And then it's Memphis, New Orleans, Augusta, Georgia. And the full lineup you can pull up at Daniel Socials and a brand new album, Reflector. Uh, also, uh, CBS Saturday Morning, you're doing that. Tell us about that. Well, I, I don't know how much about it yet because I ain't done it yet. But, but, you, but you're going to. I, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm told, and I, I plan on being there. <laughs> well, that's a good start, I think. Yeah, so. And then I also got a link in, in the email I referenced earlier, uh, Daniel Donato's Cosmic Country, Dance in the Desert, live at Fireside Sound, Joshua Tree, California. And uh, Daniel playing the Caverns in Pelham on the 20th, April the 20th, among his tour dates, Daniel's. Daniel Donato's Cosmic Country. You know, it's interesting to me where in one's life somebody finds somebody's music. Like, sometimes you're with somebody right from the start and you go on that journey with them. Sometimes you find them when they're already done and you got the whole catalog. Like, for me, I found The Grateful Dead at about age 55. Mm -hmm. So I had, like, 40 years with The Grateful Dead to immerse myself in. But they were instrumental in your sound as well, huh? The, was, uh, did somebody give you a stack of bootlegs and it's like, man, this Jerry Garcia guy is blowing my mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd been playing down at Roberts for a little while and you know part of the song book there were, were a lot of uh marty robbins songs and george jones songs and, and merle haggard songs um you know working man blues and sing me back home and in rambling fever um and we do big river by johnny cash and mama tried and um you know uh one day my my american history teacher uh came and saw me play unbeknownst to me and, th and then the next day after first period, he gave me this big old stack of CDs, and it, it was his entire Grateful Dead uh, bootleg collection <laughs> of CDs, and I had no idea really at all about the band. And uh, I, I, I turned on the, the first CD uh, out of 200 plus CDs, I still have them all at my cabin west of town, and... Uh, I remember they played a eight minute version of uh, Big River by Johnny Cash, and, and then into that they went into El Paso, <laughs> and uh, yeah. I, to me, it was which just, the original El Paso was almost five minutes. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and Grady Martin picking guitar on. That oh day, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so I had already, I've already uh, been uh, kind of taken over by that kind of country music, and and so I never had really heard anybody outside of Roberts interpret it differently, and um, it was immensely eye opening for me, and and, and uh, f full of faith and excitement and youth that the way that they would play those arrangements yeah. and tell those stories um 
you know, I taught the weeping willow how to cry. I taught the clouds how to cover up that big blue sky. I, I, I don't know a single person that, that doesn't react when yeah. they hear that. And so there's something about those stories mm. in, in the way that you can play them and bring mm-hmm. them to life. Well, know. the opening line, I met her accidentally in St. Yeah. Paul, oh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's going to have a, a good storyline. You told me that every time I heard her southern drawl. <laughs> and, and, and what was so cool about the dead was while most people were fighting bootleggers, they inc- they had taper sections. They encouraged you to come oh, and record gosh. the shows and yeah. trade amongst themselves. Oh, that's, I, that's what I love that spirit. Just so. like the people in, in our community with Cosmic Country, we have yeah. um, tapers that get there early. Uh, they're, they're setting up outside. We, we were in Hobart, Indiana the other day, and it was snowing. And they had tents up out front, and they had their tapes ready to go. And, you know, I love it. Spread the gospel. I have to admit, I snuck my old little Hitachi portable tape recorder into many a show at the Providence Civic Center when I was a kid. <laughs> N- nothing of the fidelity you would actually want to listen to, but it's a nice souvenir of the night. So, yeah. All right. Daniel's uh, full live show is coming to Pelham, Tennessee, as far as Nashville dates or places close to here. Uh, and that's uh, Daniel Donato's Co- Cosmic Country, Caverns in Pelham, on the 20th of April. And the brand new album, Reflector, wherever you get your music, it is there. Yeah. <laughs> oh the Claw. Yeah. yeah. you got to come up with a nickname because Jerry Reed referred to himself as the Claw. House, oh. the Claw. Oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great song, too. That's yeah. Daniel Donato. And, you know, Ernest was famous for saying, be better to your neighbor and you'll have better neighbors. Yeah. Doggone you. Daniel, oh. doggone you. Thanks for coming to see us. Thank you, brother. It was an honor. All right. Daniel Donato, his Cosmic Country is coming to the Caverns in Pelham on April the 20th. And uh, you ever get an urge to bust down on Broadway? Or are you past that now? Huh? You ever you ever think about a homecoming show down there? I do. I have a whole vision for our, what will be our first live record. Uh, and I don't know what to call it. I, I might call it uh, Unbroken Circle or something, but I, we, I want to play the Ryman and, and, and then uh, go play a set at Robert's. <laughs> and uh, make a live record out of both the sets. Oh, yeah, great idea! Nice. So it's a full circle moment of some kind. Yeah, with thousands of screaming bridesmaids. <laughs> yeah, in yeah. the background as your audience. Yeah. Thank you again. Travel safe. Thank you, brother. And uh, headed out. Let me pull up those dates again for the next couple of days. Uh, as he leaves us, he is headed to Athens, Georgia, Georgia Theater tomorrow night. Tuscaloosa on Friday at the Druid City Music Hall for Daniel Donato on Coffee Country and Cody. WSM Radio, CircleCountry.com has all our streaming platforms and Circle Now is in your app store. You were at the Ryman last night. Yes, and just to set the stage for the gravity of what Breland has accomplished the last three years, he has had a packed Ryman auditorium and brought every genre of music together to celebrate the Oasis Center and raise money for them. They help at-risk youth here in Middle Tennessee. And it wouldn't be a Nashville show if there was not a surprise guest or at least a few. And when I tell you that there was probably eight to nine standing ovations throughout the night in the Ryman at this show, one of the first being when Nelly stepped out on stage unannounced. Let's take a listen. That is, of course, their song High Horse Together that they also do with Blanco Brown. One of my favorites, I was up and dancing around. And one of the most endearing things about Nelly, I saw him at Bridgestone right after I moved here. And he talks in the third person. And he's so grateful. He didn't do it last night, but he always goes, Nelly is so grateful that you're here. Nelly is so thankful that you came to see him tonight. He's just so funny. Uh, and the fact that he was willing to come out and do this show and surprise everybody was, was so special. And to completely switch gears, not only was everybody losing their minds when they performed that, Breland also brought out another surprise guest, his dad, Gerard. Breland sounds a little choked up here because he's singing this song about his dad. Oh, went to church in the mother church there for a few minutes, didn't you? Absolutely. Breland's whole family is so magical and so musical. And he wrote, that's the only unreleased song that they performed last night. Everything else was either his song or a song of the artist he had on stage. But we got a sneak peek of that one. That one's not out yet, but he wrote it all about his dad. So Breland, I'm calling you out. I see you in a commercial that's running as a part of the NCAA (laughs) tournament. That's right. And a Georgetown man wearing an LSU shirt. Oh, he's got to get that bag, Bill. What is this guy? <laughs> Charlie pointed out earlier, Georgetown hadn't been good in a good long while. Yeah. It's acceptable. <laughs> Since the John Thompson era, maybe. <laughs> New episodes of My Opry Debut. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Shindellas. I'm Casey. I'm Stacy. And I'm Tam. And, and we, we are the Shindellas. Shindellas. 
We didn't know each other before we were introduced and we sat in a room and we looked each other in the eye and we said, we're coming together to sing about self-love, self-worth and self-respect and to honor women. Making their Grand Ole Opry debut, the Shindellas. First time I ever heard them, they were the performers for the opening as people make their way in and are seated for the Songwriters Hall of Fame gala here in Nashville, Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame. And they will have somebody come out each year, somebody different, and perform while people are being seated. And that's where I first saw the Shindellas. And uh, you just saw them on the stage of the Grand Ole Opry. Hope they're seeing that this morning. Mm -hmm. New episodes, Sean Cassidy, uh, Angela Johnson Reyes, Artemis Pyle, lots more Opry's YouTube channel, which is where you can also find Coffee Country and Cody because Aaron Cooper said so. Oh, yes. Every day now on the WSM Radio YouTube channel, you can watch full episodes of Coffee Country and Cody. I go home and I edit them together and upload them <laughs> so you can watch them over and over forever and ever. And the podcasts are also going out to streaming services. So the audio is on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your, your podcasts. And that lives on forever, too. So. Who are you talking about this morning, other than Breland and uh, all the fun you had last uh, night at the Ryman Auditorium? We will get back to Breland a little later in the show, I promise, because there is so much to tell. But Kane Brown, the girl dad of the century, uh -huh. he is leaving for tour tomorrow. And there's a lot going on in the Brown house. They are expecting another baby boy coming a little bit later this year. But his sweet baby girl, Kingsley, is helping Kane pack for tour, and he showed us <laughs> it is it will make you melt. And Nate Smith has covered Nirvana. It is going to make your week. And uh, let's see. Also, Willie Nelson has an announced his 4th of July picnic lineup, so you don't want to miss that. The red-headed stranger mm -hmm. from Blue Rock, Montana, rode into town one day, Philadelphia town, also known as Camden, New Jersey, in this particular <laughs> case. Yep, this year. <laughs> Coffee, Country, and Cody on WSM. Yeah, alliteration. Coffee, Country, Cody, Carrie. Carrie Adams, the Kentucky legend ambassador who has now completed her wardrobe from her last visit on the show. <laughs> She's got a ham <laughs> shirt for those of you listening on radio. If you're streaming us, our circle streaming platforms, you can see it. Uh, Easter is this Sunday, and for Easter, it's ham. we got a little history lesson. Uh, you might even want to go back to that, why we celebrate ham and Easter together. Carrie, welcome. Good to see you guys. Yes, I couldn't leave you hanging with my pork-related wardrobe, so I had to find something to join you guys. Um, I am going to recommend that Kentucky Legends start selling merch because it was really tough to find a ham shirt. <laughs> oh, you really committed to the bit. I love it. And uh, KentuckyLegend.com to follow up on all the things we're going to talk about and mm -hmm. more, including some recipes that she brought to the show. But why ham at Easter? What do you know about the history of ham and why it relates to this particular weekend? Sure. So when you think about ham, um, it, like that good smokehouse flavor, that's where ham traditionally was kept over the winter months. Kentucky legend has been smoking ham the same way for 110 years. Um, the same process, the same recipes. So it's been in that smokehouse over the winter months while we're all cold. And then Easter is really the major holiday of springtime. So that's when you pull the ham out, <laughs> you're ready to start springtime, you have a big Easter meal with ham as the centerpiece, at least we do in my family, and you are, take the time to glaze it and cover it in sauces and spices and present it on Instagram to your friends and Facebook to your mom <laughs> and TikTok to your kids, I guess. Um, <laughs> and, and like you have that as the presentation, the celebratory meal to start the spring season. Well, um, and we, we're going to talk about what you do with the leftovers, really. <laughs> well, you know, I, yeah. you brought me to, to ham fritters, which I referenced the last time you visited the show, and you're kind enough to make them. Yes, I'm, let's see how they hold up in the post, because I'm going to try and mail them to you, Bill. Because <laughs> I have not found that for, for ham fritters, so not only does it use your leftover ham, but leftover mashed potatoes and corn and cheese, because there's nothing wrong with cheese, and a little flour and you like shallow fry them. So I actually made some. We'll see if the US Post Office lets me send them to you. <laughs> you might need a couple extra layers of envelope to absorb the grease, but I think it can be done. I think it can be but, done. Well, it, and if you go to, uh, it, I'm sorry, Carrie, but if you go to KentuckyLegend.com to side dishes and the bottom of the page, there's all the there's several side dishes before you get to that one, but it's uh, it's right there. It says ham fritters, prep time, 25 minutes, total time, 55 minutes, serves six to eight. 
Yeah, and it's perfect for using all, of course, all of those things that you have left over, but it's like, a what a great breakfast that would be mm -hmm. on the, the next day if you've had people, you know, relatives in your house coming for Easter weekend, and you want a breakfast using up all of that stuff, and it just smells rich and good, but also it's super easy to make 25 minutes, as you said. So um, ham fritters I made because you you found the recipe, but we're going to talk today about ham and cheese pretzels, yes. um, ham and cheese stuffed pretzels, because the goodness of a pretzel that you remember from getting at a sports game or at the movies or at the mall, if you were like me and you wandered around with a, with a pretzel in your hands, um, crowd looking the rest of the time, um, <laughs> you make them at home and you've got the goodness of ham and cheese left over from your Easter meal. Absolutely. You are the ham ambassador. Can I be the commander in cheese for this recipe today? Please. Okay. That would be great. Have, but have you ever noticed, I mean, you take ham, ham in and in of itself, great, cheese, Great. Cheese. Pretzels, great. Then you put Cheese them all together. Better. The key word I, I have noticed, though, for things that are always good, if you have yeah. the word stuffed mm. in there, <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it always seems to be better somehow. So take us through this recipe. Yeah, I mean, and hopefully you love them so much that you yourself are stuffed afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yes. I know. I was just thinking my friend Lauren is, the, I think, the czar of cheese, but I think commander in cheese is also Perfect. acceptable. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have your beautiful Kentucky legend ham that you served, and it was great as the main entree in your Easter dinner, but you have some leftover. What do you want to do with it? You're going to dice it up. Do I have an Easter plate? You know that I do. Mm -hmm. um, you have it <laughs> diced up, ready to go. And you fill into, we've all seen those um, either in a tube or a bag, like pizza dough ready to go from your grocery store. Uh -huh. So you roll it out um, flat on your kitchen table with a little bit of flour. <laughs> I, I say, use a rolling pin. Also, a chilled wine bottle also works. I don't judge your <laughs> My <life>. girl. <laughs> <laughs> You need to get the dough flat, do what you have to do, what, what you have around your house. Um, and then you'll just, I take a pizza cutter, um, but you could use a knife, anything, and just cut it into strips so you're ready to have things to fill. Um, and then you have your little diced up ham ready to go. Easy peasy filling. And then you have shredded cheese. And I like shredded cheddar cheese. That's what the recipe calls for. Um, but if you're a mozzarella person or a Colby Jack girl or taco seasoning guy, who knows, um, whatever <laughs> shredded cheese they have in the grocery store, put that on top. And then it's really simple. You just literally squeeze the top together. Um, so you make a little cylindrical tube of goodness, ham, cheesy happiness, ready to go. Um, I wish I had the skills that, uh, speaking of them all, you know, like where the, the Auntie Anne's pretzel guys could go like, shoo, 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 and it was one. <laughs> yeah. um, I have not worked up to that yet. I was trying last night to see if I could shoo, 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 shoo it all up. <laughs> um, once I have this like all pinched together and you can roll it in a tube, I would love to do shoo, 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 shoo. Ah, so close. So close. <laughs> <laughs> Better than I can do. Yeah, you can take your time at home and actually twist it into a pretzel shape, classic pretzel shape. It's great. And what you're going to do with that pretzel, you know, we all love um, the pretzel that's got a little bit of bite on the outside and then you get into the jelly goodness inside. Mm -hmm. That bite comes from you th for 30 seconds, literally in boiling water with some baking soda in it. You drop your pretzel in 30 seconds in that boiling water and it gets the little crust in it. So magic of television. I have some I've already boiled for 30 seconds. Ah. <laughs> kind of like a, a pro. Kind of like a bagel, Carrie, huh? Same idea. Exactly. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that, that's the whole point. They have to boil a bagel. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you, you've made those 30-second pretzel. It kept its shape. You just have to use a little slotted spoon to get it out. You've got those ready to go. You take an egg wash, my fancy brush, um, of literally just one egg. And this will give it that nice golden color. And it also... Let's be honest, it helps the salt stick, and that's what we're all here for. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so you're going to wash your pretzel with that egg wash and put your coarse salt or your sea salt. or You could, I mean, go mad. Have garlic salt. Do what you want to do. Ooh. I think garlic salt is, I, I opened my apartment with garlic salt and cinnamon sugar as my only spices, and it got me pretty far. Um, <laughs> but, uh, garlic salt, regular salt, sea salt um, on your egg washed pretzel, and then you pop it in the oven magic of television let's pretend that we've been in the oven 
um, at 425 for 18 to 20 minutes. I would say 18 to start because I had a couple burnt pretzels. So I wasn't paying attention. Um, and then you pull them out of the oven. You have ham and cheese, stuffed pretzels, Ooh. ready to go. Perfect snack. You add a little dipping sauce of mustard, honey mustard. Um, you could you could go mad any kind of mustard mustard based sauce you want. Mm -hmm. This is like the perfect. You guys undoubtedly are following March Madness. It's a perfect <laughs> sport snack. Um, it's the perfect you know like I just need to give the kids something to eat so they'll leave me alone. Pretzels, <laughs> um, and it's only taken fifteen minutes of your active time and and you know a total time of forty minutes to make a perfect snack. You're gonna break it apart. You get that lovely like bready yeasty it smells good it's hot you've got the sweet ham because i use brown sugar ham obviously who am i um the, the brown sugar and cheddar cheese inside the pretzel fully stuffed all the way through you are a very happy person and you've used up some of your leftovers ham and cheese stuffed pretzels today oh, on coffee country and I'm Cody sold. and kentucky legend ham for the holidays uh, my next request is uh, hawaiian breakfast pizza that i saw using kentucky oh, so legend ham <laughs> That's funny. There's actually a Hawaiian breakfast or uh, Hawaiian Cuban sandwich as well. That you use those King's Hawaiian rolls, cut them, put ham, Swiss cheese, pickles, and bake them in the oven. That I was tempted to do, but I thought, you know, four carb based things in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a little much for even me. <laughs> next time. Next time. Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank Carrie, you. Thank you. Carrie Adams, the ham ambassador for Kentucky Legend. Find out more. It's ham for Easter. Kentucky Legend. Dot com. This is Coffee Country and Cody. A beautiful morning in Middle Tennessee. Andrew Ferris of In Excess, been a guest on the show. Our Australian friend is 65 years old today. Quentin Tarantino, Charlie Maddow's favorite, is 61 years old oh, I today. Love him. Yeah. Uh, Pulp Fiction, one of your favorites, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood oh, more recently. Yeah, brilliant film. Kill Bill back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Part uh, one and two with Uma Thurman. There you go. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. uh, Mariah Carey is 55. Fergie is 49. Mm -hmm. Black Eyed Peas, Fergie. Birth anniversary of jazz singer Sarah Vaughn and Don Warden, who was, uh, he was, Part of Porter Wagner's outfit for so long, and it went on after he left the band. He's in the Steel Guitar Hall of Fame. If you mm -hmm. remember the tele, anybody can visualize Don because he's very stoic on playing all these hot licks, mm -hmm. and his face just remained mm -hmm. straight. And he went on to manage Dolly and Porter, mm -hmm. and then eventually Dolly till the end of uh, of his working career. And good morning to Aaron Cooper, who's Hello. doing entertainment. Good morning. We have entered tour season. The sun is shining, and artists are getting ready to hit the road. And when they're hitting the road for a while, they need some help packing. So why not <laughs> enlist your toddler daughter to pick out everything you're going to wear on tour? Here is Baby Kingsley, Kane Brown's daughter, picking out his outfits. Cool. Thank you. You want to know where? Those are a little bright. Is this one? Uh, sure. You can put them in there. That was very neat. Just fold them sideways. Thank you. Look at this. So we did it. We did it. Yeah. Oh. Hey, and that's how we look at her little tutu oh my gosh when i was that age when my dad would go on business trips although granted much shorter i would get very very sad but i don't make maybe it hasn't hit yet that daddy is going to be gone for a little while but he'll have to be coming back because they're expecting a baby boy so his off days are going to be filled with lots of trips back home to nashville as they should be all right I have a soft spot for Nirvana because Dave Grohl grew up in my hometown and mowed my neighbor's lawns. And Nate Smith also has a soft spot for Nirvana. And he is granting us the gift of a cover of Heart Shaped Box out on April 5th. And, well, it's so uh, uplifting. I can oh, see I, why. <laughs> that's what people, when I was growing up and I... I, I well, it wasn't a happy ending. <laughs> but, uh, let's just say no, that. No, no. So. <laughs> when I was growing up, I, I feel like I don't look like someone that would really love nirvana or heavier music but that was always a joke with my friends that i love that genre and it doesn't make sense but that's okay it doesn't matter again that's coming out april 5th uh after, ever since nate smith had world on fire at number one for 10 weeks i think he can put out whatever he wants we'll we'll grant him that all right i keep talking about breland and friends just because it was so renowned probably eight or nine st standing ovations the entire night this was last night at the ryman auditorium it's the third year in a row breland has dedicated a night to raising money for the oasis Center, which helps at-risk youth here in Middle Tennessee. 
And one of the main performances that brought the house down was the War and Treaty joining Breland on stage for Lover's Game. Let's take a listen. Tanya wearing her ACDC shirt and her leather pants. She's rocking out there with, with Michael and Breland just... Whew. Looking for your loving to be mine all mine. Oh, I, that was my yeah. pick of the week back in October of 2022. I looked it up a little earlier this morning. Oh. I mean, we're doing it live at the Ryman. Oh, my goodness. Just the best. We love them so much. And they, they're running all over the place. They were just on stage with Zach Bryan in D.C. in my neck of the woods. Uh, so they're not getting any rest, and neither are we. All right. Willie Nelson has announced the lineup for his annual 4th of July picnic. This is a tradition he's been doing since the 70s. And we actually have some pictures, I believe, from the 1976 picnic that uh, Willie's been been doing this for. And he's been bringing a star-studded lineup, including Bob Dylan, Robert Plant, Allison Krauss, Marin Morris, Mavis Staples, and Celise. And he's taken the picnic to Camden, New Jersey, near the birthplace of our country. There was some discrepancy. They're like, oh, the birthplace of our country. So Philadelphia. Well, Camden, New Jersey is 14 minutes away. So it still counts. They needed the venue for the size. And uh, Willie says it's an honor to host such an extraordinary lineup of talent in the birthplace of our country. And tickets go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. if you want to celebrate the 4th of July with Willie Nelson in New Jersey. Yeah. You going, Bill? Look closely. He signed the Declaration of Independence. He yes, was around. he is that he old. He was there. Yeah. He has been here that it's long. It's kind of down, you know, you, Hancock. He <laughs> hogged the page, and then everybody else had to come in after that. <laughs> Bill, what is uh, your nickname for Bailey Zimmerman? Please remind us all. Well, uh, who, who was in studio and called him? Graham Barham. He called him a... Spider monkey. Spider monkey. I called him a squirrel monkey by accident, and mm -hmm. then we've now gone with the flying squirrel. Yet somehow they all fit. Yeah. They all make sense and describe yeah. Bailey Zimmerman. <laughs> uh, he deserves some huge congratulations. He just got five new RIAA certifications, which means uh, it's a certification that's based on the number of times uh, your singles and albums have been sold. So he earned five new platinum certifications for his record, Religiously, the album, and its accompanying singles, Religiously, Rock in a Hard Place, Where It Ends, and Fall in Love. So that's incredible. He's been a little quiet ever since then, um, but he did release a song with the Jonas Brothers, which was my favorite release he's done so far. And uh, we're waiting on that second album. We don't know when it'll be out yet, but we will keep you posted when we find out. Hey, a couple of milestones as we wrap up. This date in 1965, Roger Miller, number one on the U.S. country charts with King of the Road. Everybody snap your fingers. And in 1993, Clint Black, grand old opera star. Hello, buddy. Number one with When My Ship Comes In. Had the number one record in the land. Mm -hmm. Aaron Cooper with Entertainment this morning. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, thank uh, you. Charlie Matters, you're going to the Grand Old Opry House. Get your dress clothes on and head out here in a little while. Yes, sir. Riders in the Sky are going to kick it off. Jeannie Seeley, Aoife O'Donovan, and Daly and Vincent. Amethyst Kia. The Price Sisters will make their Grand Old Opry debut tonight. I worked with them a decade ago at Uncle Dave making days. <laughs> oh Chancey God. Williams and Don Schlitz will wrap it up tonight. You work a show with Charlie Mattis. You'll get there. You'll get to the hey, stage of the ten Grand year town. It's a hey, I've got proof of it. It'll just take you a while. <laughs> David Nail is going to bring us new music tomorrow. Very excited to see an old friend. And uh, we'll also encore our visit, in-studio visit, and live performance. Was he extraordinary or what? <gasps> Daniel Donato. So excited I got to finally meet him. <laughs> yeah. Daniel Donato, Cosmic Country on Coffee, Country, and Cody. We will see you tomorrow morning. Early.